Hey loves, Tony here and welcome to episode two of the TL Yarn Crafts podcast. I am Tony, the designer and educator behind TL Yarn Crafts. You can find me at TL Yarn Crafts on YouTube, Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. So before I say anything else, I want to give the hugest thank you debt of gratitude out the wazoo to every single one of you who watched the first episode of the podcast. I was not even like legit, not even planning to do this podcast, but you guys validated every, every motivation that I had to finally get this done. And the fact that it was so well received, just my heart, my heart is so full and so happy that you guys don't mind me running my mouth and show you, showing you yarning things for like, I don't know, 45 minutes or so. It's really, really gratifying. That's all I can say. So thank you so much for making sure that I know that this is something that you guys actually want to see. So we're gonna kick this off with works in progress and finished objects. It is now March, so I'm excited to show you guys the progress that I've made on my temperature blanket. Here she is. Okay, she don't look a whole lot different than she did last time I showed her to you. She's a bit longer. Oh, look at this color. So I think we'd made it up to like here last time, a little bit past here. So this is all of February. You'll notice I don't have another white stripe. I have not been able to finish up um, last week with the transition from February to March. I just haven't been able to do it yet. I usually do my updates on Sunday and yesterday was kind of crazy because my anniversary is coming up and I got something special planned, but don't tell him I told you that. Um, so I still need to catch up, but February is looking really good. We had some warm patches and then like, I don't know why, but the yellow stripes just make me so freaking happy. Um, we had a nice kind of warm spike. I know it, it chilled out a lot and we actually got a little dusting of snow last week. So I'm probably going to get back into some of the dove grays and the squirrel heathers and all of that. But this, all this yellow and all of this, the color is called allspice. Oh. It just makes me so happy. I think I just missed the sun. Like daylight savings time, daylight savings time is going to be starting up soon. And I'm really, really looking forward to it. Like I'm really excited about it. Just having a string of days that are not gray, that are like bright and sunny and happy and vibrant is good. And I will say, I was talking to my husband about this and I feel like 2019 has not been as bad as 2018. I always fear the month of February because it's always the worst weather wise, but Actually hasn't been really bad. I did make a quick change with my temperature blanket and it's my temperature blanket so I can do whatever the hell I want, right? So I am really motivated to get into some of the other colors here and I just haven't been able to do it yet and I'm like super bummed about it. I've been working with the average temperatures to do my temperature blanket and I've decided I'm gonna switch to doing the highs because warm weather, the warmest weather is what always makes me happy anyway. So I'm gonna switch to the high temperature so I can get up in these pinks eventually. But fingers crossed at some point in March, the temperature will make it above like, I don't know, 50 degrees, 60 degrees and we can actually use some of our other colors. So. Yay, excited, looking forward to some warmer temps. So I've got two finished objects to show you this time, which I'm really surprised because I work on a lot of projects, but in between, I don't actually get to finish a ton of stuff. And if I do get to finish it, sometimes I have to send it off like to a yarn store or to a yarn company or something. So I'm excited that I did finish my project from Make It Cow 2019. I was making the Ada Shawl, the Ada Shawl XL is what I decided to call it. And I finished it and it's so pretty. I just got pictures taken of it. And, oh God. I love it. Okay, here she is in all her glory. I know last time I talked about her, I only had like six more rows. I added a few more rows than I was planning. So it's not huge. None of the sections are gigantic, but as a whole, okay, I'm just, I'm going to stand up this time. I know last time I said I would, now I am. But here she is. Ain't she pretty? Ain't she pretty? She is pretty. And it's actually kind of warm in here right now. And I don't want to wear this, but oh, I just love it. So the Ada Shawl Excel pattern is not going to be available until I get the photos back from my photographer, but as soon as it is, I will update this video with a direct link to it. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw, you know, I'm not gonna throw it on because I've got like a Facebook, you know, I'm gonna throw it on. I wasn't gonna put it on because I have on makeup and I, I hate the idea of makeup getting on my hand makes, but it's like, then when I'm gonna wear them, you know? Oh, oh, hello, gorgeous. Hello, darling. I was wearing this the other day because it got so cold and snowy outside and I hadn't driven my car for like two days and I needed to scrape it off. Mm. I love you. I love you, Ada. Oh, she's so cute. I'm just gonna wear her for a minute. Okay. 
<laughs> so really excited about this. Like I said, I just got pictures taken by my photographer and the model that I use, she's like a tiny little thing. So this looks normal size on me and it legit looks like she's wearing a blanket. I kind of love it. So in the first episode of the podcast, I mentioned this gorgeous yarn that I got from Hugh Loco. Say hello, Hugh Loco. Say hello. Hello, Hugh Loco. So I got this yarn from Hugh Loco, which I absolutely love. The color is called Flower Child. And I was holding on to it for a while. Wasn't sure exactly what it was going to become. I got some mohair also from Nicole. So the original plan was to hold a length of this yarn, which is a worsted weight, with the mohair and make a hat. Well, things got sidetracked but I did end up making something with one skein of what I got. And here she is. Eee, isn't she cute? Oh my God, such a fan. So this girlfriend here, I'm gonna hold her up so you can really get a feel for all this texture, all this color, all this crochet happiness, like the widest of brims. I did the, oh, well, I guess I should tell you what it's called. I've decided to call this the Flower Child Beanie. And here are a few of the features of it that I absolutely love. It's got a nice wide brim here. It's got this pretty like braided delineation between the body of the hat and the brim, which I was really excited about. And then it's got this nice like textured, but still sort of lacy stitch pattern. And then it all comes together at the top. And I put this giant pom-pom that I got from my friend at Sierra's crochet crafts on the top. I just feel like she has really fantastic pom-poms. Like, look at that fluff. It just makes me so happy. I just love it. So good. Um, so this is going to be, once I get it done and uploaded, going to be a free pattern on my blog. I'm so grateful for the yarn support and for Nicole of Hugh Loco to reach out and say, hey, do something fun with my yarn, that I just want to pass on that love and that generosity to you guys. So this is going to be a free pattern on my blog, toicblog.com, and it's going to have sizes for the entire family, all the way from newborn to adult. So once it's all done, I will include a link down in the description of this video so you can go straight to my blog and find this pattern. I'm so excited about it's so cute I would put it on but I just I just got my hair done so I'm not gonna do that so this is the adult size and I have more samples of this coming um, that I'm planning to photograph for the finished pattern that I put up but I also made a teeny weeny little three month size look at it look how cute <laughs> now this pom-pom is from Rebecca of RKC Handmade. Um, she provided pom-poms for Make It Cal 2019, one of the giveaways, and she sent a little something for me, which I was really grateful for. So I held on to it and I thought it just looked so cute on here. So this yarn is actually from Bad Mom Yarns. I wanna make sure I'm saying it, Bad Mom Yarns. And this color was called Peach and she sent me a skein that I used for a hat and I had some left over and it was like the perfect amount to make this tiny hat. So I made these to kind of coordinate together kind of like a mommy and me type set I actually have a friend who is pregnant and just found out that she's having a girl so it just ended up making sense so both of these all of the sizes are going to be available up on my blog these are going to go as a gift I don't do finished products anymore but hopefully you can find somebody really really nice to make one for you if you want next up it is time for hashtag yarn love so I have been really really good in 2019, as good as I can be, to not acquire yarn for no reason. Now, I'll be honest, and I'm sure you see it back here, there are some yarns that I talked about last time on the podcast, and I said I would use them. Haven't gotten around to it yet because I decided the product that I was going to make was a little too hard wearing for that yarn. So I'm saving it for something special, but there are some other yarns that I recently acquired for very specific projects. So like, I'm proud of myself. I'm patting myself on that back. I'm being good, I swear. One of the questions I get a ton is like, what is my favorite yarn? And I can't in good conscience ever, ever, ever definitively answer that question because I have so many yarns that I love for different reasons, different fibers, different companies, different yarn weights, all that stuff. But what I will say, if you're ever looking for a yarn company that does not disappoint, please, 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 please do not sleep on Knit Picks. Knit Picks is US based and they actually have a distribution center here in Columbus, Ohio. So I might be a little bit biased because I can get my yarn really, really fast. But one thing that I love about Knit Picks is their variety. They have yarn to fit every single budget. They have gorgeous yarns that feel amazing, that look great in your projects. I love that they send out a catalog, which who even does catalogs anymore? But I love that they send out a catalog because it really inspires my projects and it shows me what the yarn looks like worked up. So I had a recent acquisition of some Knit Picks yarns and while I haven't used any of these just yet, just straight out of the package, I know that I love them already. The first of those yarns is this guy right here. This one is called the Big Cozy. 
get all up in that. Mm, look at you. Zoom up. It's hard to zoom up because it's got that pretty little halo on there because there's some alpaca in this guy. So this is called the Big Cozy and it is a super 55% super fine alpaca, 44%, 45% Peruvian Highland wool. So it's got the weight and drape and the softness of that alpaca, but it's also got some of that grittiness and that integrity and that kind of hard wearing spirit of Peruvian Highland wool, which I love. Um, another Peruvian Highland wool that I really, really like is some of the product that comes from We Are Knitters. So if you ever use any of that yarn, you'll feel some of the similarities in a yarn like this. So like I said, I haven't used it just yet. I've got a project in mind for it and doing a little bit of swatching, but this is some of the nice squishiest yarn. This is a six super bulky. And while I don't think it's quite as heavy as like the wool from We Are Knitters or like the heavier kind of comparable yarn from uh, Wool in the Gang, I think it's probably a really, really good alternative. It's not quite as heavy. It's a little bit lighter. Um, but as far as the look of it and kind of that single ply nature and having that really nice halo on it, this is going to feel very comparable and be much more reasonably priced than any of those yarns. Now, if you are looking for a kind of a one-to-one -one alternative for some of those really nice, heavy, single ply yarns, I'm going to show you this guy right here. He's called Tough Puff. So this one is also a single ply. This one is 100% 100% wool. It just says 100% wool. It doesn't say like Highland wool. Wool. It's not super wash or anything like that. Um, so you can see how thick this is. And that's one of the things that I really, really love about it because I feel like that thick single ply yarn is just really, really trendy right now. And it looks good for a lot of different kinds of projects. So I have something planned for this that's going to happen in this color, which is honestly why I picked it. This color is doe, like a deer. It's so cute. And lastly, another yarn that I got, and I've tried their City Tweed collection in their, I think it's the Aaron Weight, but I haven't tried the DK. So this one is called City Tweed DK from Knit Picks. And the makeup of this is 55% merino wool, 25% alpaca, 20% Donegal Tweed. So it's got some softness. It almost not quite, but almost has like a sheen to it. It's not shiny, but it's definitely got a little bit more um, shine and definition than say this wool and alpaca blend. Uh, and I think that comes from the Donegal, from the Tweed. And uh, it's just it's just so lovely and squishy. And that's one of the things that I have to say about nitpicks is that they really find a good way to straddle the line between value and quality. And I find that depending on the company that you're working with, you don't often get both. Um, so if you're going to go to like your local, just kind of big box store, you're going to find those really good value yarns and you're going to find maybe a smattering of semi-precious fibers. You're going to find some yarns with like 10 or 20% alpaca, maybe. But if you go to a place like Knit Picks, you're going to find luxury fiber counts. You're going to find more yarns that are like full on luxury fibers. And yeah, they'll cost a little bit more, but that option is there. And since you're buying online, Line, you don't have um, some of those overhead costs that like a place that's based in a brick and mortar store might have. So Nitpicks really keeps their prices low. They deliver really fast. Again, I'm biased because I live here in Columbus and they have a DC here. Um, they deliver really fast. They have really great colors. Whatever you like, they're definitely going to have it. So I definitely encourage you, even if you don't need anything from Nitpicks right now, just sign up for their catalog, get on that list, and I promise you, you will get inspired by something ASAP. So next up here in hashtag yarn love, I'm going to share something that I recently received in the mail that legit made me cry. Like, I think there was a tear out of one eye and probably two out of this one. And that's don't, that just don't happen to me, okay? If you are not familiar already, there is a little situation out in Instagram land called Fibershare. And Fibershare is basically run by two magnificent women. I'm gonna tag them here and here. They basically give yarn and fiber lovers an opportunity to connect with one another by sending gifts. So it's a gift exchange where you sign up and then you get paired up with a person who's gonna send to you and then a person you're going to send to. I've been doing fiber share for years now and they do them multiple times a year. I've probably done fiber share like I don't know like seven times it feels like. I'd have to check my email to know for sure but 
I can say without a doubt, I have never been disappointed by a fiber share box. Every single one that I receive has at least one thing in it that I covet, that I cherish, that I'm so grateful for because I know that my partners took the time to be really thoughtful about what they were sending. So this time around, I was really excited because I got paired up with a fiber share partner who is somebody I know. So her name is Kelly of Knitbrooks. If you know me, you gotta know Kelly because she is like the Canadian wilderness goddess all around, but she's also like super silly and really cute and a little bit awkward, but in an endearing way. And she's just one of those people that you like, I feel like she just walks around with like this like mist of positive energy behind her. Like everyone in her presence, I think, just kind of gets lifted up because she is a really fantastic person. So I've known Kelly of Knitbrooks for a really, really long time. So when I saw her name pop up in my FiberShare email, I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I saw Kelly's name, messaged her on Instagram immediately and was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so my package arrived today. I haven't checked the mail in like a week because that's my life right now. That's just how I roll. Um, so I finally checked the mail and amongst all the other packages, I had this cute little box from Canada and it was from Kelly. So I opened up my box, let those three tears fall, gathered myself, took a really cute picture for Instagram, and now I'm gonna share everything that was in my fiber share box with you guys. So when I opened the box, each one of my presents was individually wrapped. Now, this is not something that's required by fiber share, but if you've got a partner that's really gonna go above and beyond, like they make sure the packaging itself just is a treat. Um, so I opened it up, saw all these packages, set them out, and Kelly specifically said, you have to open them in order to get the full effect. So I'm gonna share them in the order in which I open them. I think I'm gonna keep this in order. I think this is right. Okay, so the very first one that I received is this adorable, adorable little mini skein from, this is from Richard DeVries, The Yarns of Richard DeVries. This is a mini skein and this color is called Anticipation. I believe. And it's just so cute and squishy and fantastic. There's not a whole lot of information on here about the fiber content. There's not even any like contact information. I know Richard DeVries and I actually had the pleasure, absolute pleasure of meeting this gentleman in person when I went to a yarn store in Michigan. Um, and this cute little pink, yellow, purple spotted happiness, like this was the first thing that I opened and I was like, I am in for a treat with this box. Like I can feel it. So I was really, really happy about that. So that was the first thing that I opened. And the second thing I opened was this delightful candle from Foray de Pines. I think that means pine forest in French. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I could, I could be saying this completely wrong, but I received this really, really cute candle. Um, and Kelly did this kind of awesome thing when she, um, when we were corresponding via email about our fiber share package, um, when you fill out, gosh, the second you open this, like the smell just hits you and it's so pleasant and amazing. But, um, Kelly sent me an email and it basically had like, 10 or 12 more questions above what FiberShare asked you when you sign up for them. Kelly has a whole separate series of questions to really help personalize the packages that she sends. So one of the questions was, what kind of candle scents do you like? Um, and I kind of talked about, like, I like woodsy stuff and I like um, some good florals that I don't like vanilla and I don't like anything that smells like dessert. Like, I don't want my house to smell like chocolate chip cookies because I'm not even eating sugar right now and that's just gonna piss me off. So. I got this really nice pine forest candle. It's, gosh, it just smells so good. Uh, it looks like the company is called Indigo Scents. Spend a serene moment with nature in an iconic Canadian landscape, beloved of artists, fragrant winter rose, pine and balsam fur creates an ideal escape. I feel like I'm escaping y'all. So I burned this briefly earlier today just to get like a good feel of what that scent is like. And, it's really fantastic. So then the third gift that was inside the package, there was a little note on this gift and it basically said, a Hamilton area fiber share package is not complete without this. As soon as I saw that message, I was like, I think I know what's in here because one of my absolute favorite dyers, Lindsay of Hello Stella is also in the Hamilton area and I know and feel very jealous about the fact that she and Kelly get to hang out at their knit night. So I was like, oh my gosh, is this gonna be something from Lindsay? Ooh! And it was! Ah! So 
That might have been a little bit intense, but like that's how I felt when I opened it. So for several reasons. One is from Lindsay of Hello Stella, which she has really fantastic yarns. I met her in person for the very first time. I want to say it was a little under two years ago or maybe three years ago. I don't know. But when I went to Toronto for Our Maker Life and I got to meet her in person, this was very shortly after I came to learn about her business. And just over the last few years, I feel like I've watched her kids grow up. I've watched the love story between her and her husband. And they're just like these really fun, funky people. And they're both like living the dream and just being entrepreneurs and amazing people. He's a photographer. She's a yarn dyer. They've got two adorable kids. They travel. They're just fantastic. So even outside of just who they are as people, which I know I sound hella stalkerish right now, but all of our lives are on Instagram, okay? Lindsay makes fabulous yarn. And not only do I know that, but I also know that one of Kelly's favorite things is the color gross yellow, which is like this deep mustardy, like if it wasn't popular right now, it'd just be an awful color that nobody would like. And this, friends, feels very gross yellow to me. Just soak that in for a second. And now it belongs to me and it's in my stash and I'm so grateful. I have no idea what this is gonna become, but that's not the point, is it? I'm just happy to have it. Next up was a cute little treat for Fiber Share. Outside of yarn and yarny related things, you're also meant to send stuff that um, you just think your partner will like and things that will just bring them joy into their lives. So Kelly and basically everybody else knows how I feel about cats. So she found these cute little like sticky notes with cats with like thought bubbles and I think I'm just gonna like write funny things on them and stick them around the house and see if my husband finds them and how long it'll take him to ask about them. I don't know, we'll see. Like they're really cute. Like I like this guy at the bottom cause he's kind of reminiscent of my cat Peanut. I just love it. Anything cat related, I'll take it. Next up was a Canadian delicacy. It's these, they're pure soft maple sugar. So I haven't tried these. I've seen them before. Um, like I've said, I'm from Michigan. So a lot of Canadian things just kind of seep down into my original neck of the woods. So I've seen these before. I've never tried them. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll give it a try. It says they're soft. Now I'm nervous. Mm, they smell good. Okay, they're not actually soft. Oh, God. They crumble. Ooh, that's intense. Ooh. Okay, it's really good. But oh my gosh. That's a really strong maple flavor. <laughs> Wee! I will take that tiny of a bite of these for the rest of my life. Thank you, Kelly. So the present that I'm gonna show you next that came out of my fiber share package is actually the one that made me cry. And I'm gonna show it to you and then I'm gonna explain it to you and I'm gonna try really, really hard not to start crying again. I don't think it's gonna happen. It's this. So this is actually a um, pillow sleeve that has my logo on it. And I'll include information below about the company that actually made this. But the reason that this made me cry is because Teal Yarn Crafts, I feel like, is something that I've come to embody as a person. Like, it's not just a brand. It's not just a company. Like, I feel like it's a, it's a true extension of me. So the fact that I opened this up, that not only was it a present, it was a true thoughtful gift. And I'm going to get a pillow form um, and put it in here and keep it in my office. And it'll be something that I look at. And every time I see it, I'm going to think of Kelly. And I'm going to think of how much of a wild ride it's been to be a maker and to interact with people like her and, and others that I've come to know and love and admire. Here it comes. Here it comes. Do not ruin your eyeliner, girl. We worked really hard on it today. But this was just just really sweet and it hit a part of my kind of maker consciousness that just receiving gifts doesn't necessarily hit like i'm grateful for everything that i get and everything that i have and that i experience but this just something felt instantly sentimental about this so i'm so so happy to receive it next up kelly decided to feed my yarn hook addiction by carving me a hand turned hook Kelly makes these, as far as I know, 100% by hand. I've already swatched with this bad boy. It is amazing. She's got it marked as a six millimeter hook, which is by far my absolute favorite hook size. If you follow Kelly, you know that she does updates with a few of her hooks. She's actually getting into doing hook sets now from the sticks and branches that she saves from her local forest. Um, so I just love the idea of taking something 
from nature and making it into just this beautiful tool. Like I'm, a, I'm the kind of person who really appreciates not only the function of my tools, but also the form. I want to work with beautiful things that have a story, that have a history. So I feel like this is going to become by far one of my absolute favorite hooks. Let me give you a quick zoom in. I now have two Nib Brooks hooks. Let's see if I can get an entire set. I don't know. The next fantastic thing that was in my fiber share package was this enamel pin that Kelly actually carries in her shop and it says, keep close to nature's heart. Now I don't consider myself a really like nature focused person. I feel like Kelly's got that spot sewn up, but I did feel like the message of this really resonated with me about being present, about being aware, and about being focused on the things that are around us and making sure that we're showing appreciation for everything that we have. So I love this. This is going on my field bag right now. And then the very last thing in the package was this gorgeous yarn. Kelly put on the package that this was a yarn that was specifically dyed for a shop that is local to her. She actually works at it sometimes. And this yarn is called Yarn Indulgences. It says, always unique and often one of a kind. This this base is Z Lux Sock and it's 400 yards, um, 113 grams fingering weight yarn, 70% merino, 20% cashmere, 10% nylon. And I would guess it's the weight of the cashmere that makes these 400 yards be 113 grams as opposed to 100 grams, which I don't mind. I don't even care. This color is called Spring in, is this Bronte or Bront? B-R-O-N-T-E? probably wrong both ways but spring in I'll say Bronte because I'm extra spring in Bronte village and it looks like if you dunked a skein of yarn into a jelly sandwich like it's got this really pretty like deep pinky purple happening here and then here at the top it's got kind of some of that bare skein it's got these pretty um really faint pinkish purple tones and then underneath it it's got this really gorgeous kind of brown splotches with a color that almost looks red, but I think it's just a really deep purple. I absolutely love it. I don't have any plans for it, but it's gonna keep my yarn stash very happy. So I can't thank Kelly enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you for this extremely thoughtful gift. I told her already, but let this video stand in perpetuity of my thanks. And if you haven't participated in FiberShare before, I've got a link down in the description for you to find out more about it. And I strongly encourage you to sign up for their email list so you know when the next round of FiberShare is. Next up, we're gonna move into the segment that I call my favorite things. Some of them are yarn related, many of them are not. The first thing that I'm absolutely loving right now is that the Maker's Retreat is coming up and it's only in a couple weeks from now and I literally cannot wait. If you're not familiar, the Maker's Retreat is a really fun weekend retreat that's happening in Michigan. It's organized by Sierra, my friend of Sierra's Crochet Crafts. I might have said that wrong. If I did, I'll put it right here. I'll put it right here either way so you know what I'm talking about. But Sierra got the bright idea to find a cabin and let a bunch of makers hang out there, knit and crochet together, learn from each other, try new things, and really just have a great weekend away doing all of the maker-related things. She put it together and it's gonna be a fantastic weekend. I'm especially excited because I'm gonna be leading a workshop all about Instagram. I am sharing some of my insider tips. Now, you guys know that I have no qualms about letting you know every behind the scenes thing of how I run my social media, how I run my business. I am a completely open book, but I really dug into the vault of my secrets and prepared some things for this makers retreat so that the I think 30 or so uh, women that are going to be in this house will really get a feel for how I've been able to grow my Instagram and how I've been able to use that to grow my business as a whole so I'm very much looking forward to that I'll include links below because I think Sierra's got her eye on the next maker retreat if you weren't able to make it into this one and you best believe I'll be at that one too another one of my favorite things and this one also happens to be yarn related I know I know are these guys right here so these are the first streamline swirl hooks and this is their cookies and cream edition so I did a whole YouTube video outlining my initial um, thoughts and also ultimate review of these hooks since that video I've legit used these for everything they are resin materials they're really strong and they feel like plastic but they have no seams which is really nice and they just they're lightweight, but they've got some density and some integrity. I think the hook head is perfect. They're so pretty. I literally, I, 
I cannot get enough of these hooks. I don't think I own a more perfect hook than these right here. I haven't encountered a fiber that it didn't like. I haven't encountered a stitch that it didn't like. I did bobble stitches on this and you know how many loops need to go up your hook for a bobble stitch and these worked perfectly. I'm going to include a link to my complete review of these hooks and also a link to get them directly because I don't know if after their current stock of these hooks that there will be any left. So please, please, please make sure you get them. They're really reasonably priced. I think they're like 22 bucks a piece and compared to the other furls hooks that is really reasonable <laughs> it's fabulous because each one looks a little bit different and they've stolen my heart these hooks have stolen my heart and next up something not yarn related that i am loving right now is the sims 100 baby challenge that's being led by kelsey impichike i think i'm saying that right I wrote it down just to make sure. But Kelsey and Peach K, who is a producer at BuzzFeed, started this series to follow the 100 Baby Challenge and she's doing her own version. The 100 Baby Challenge has all of these rules, but basically you create a matriarch and she has to have 100 babies by different baby daddies. Now, that sounds really crude and really ridiculous, but if you play The Sims at all, you really don't care about like social rules in general. What's fun about this is the way that Kelsey plays it because she created a matriarch named Chelsea Impeachishme. Um, so it's a play on her own name. And it's funny because she consistently interchanges herself with the character in The Sims. She talks about all the children like they're her own children. She talks about the dads of these kids, like she has a personal connection with them. And it's just so funny to watch. And as somebody who used to play The Sims religiously in high school, it's kind of taken me back, which I really appreciate. So if you haven't watched um, Kelsey's 100 Baby Challenge, I definitely encourage you to. And another reason that Kelsey's kind of on my mind is she recently uploaded a video about her receiving her 100,000 YouTube subscriber plaque and it's a really shiny gorgeous plaque that YouTube sends and it's all like congratulations you've made this huge feat and you're gonna move on to your next milestone but just appreciate this moment and what I love about it is that Kelsey unboxed her plaque and read like the form letter that comes with it but it's so beautifully worded like she started to cry and I started to cry. I can appreciate all of the work that she does. I've watched several of the videos on her personal channel, many of the videos that she's been part of on the BuzzFeed Player channel, and I'm just like, my heart goes out to her because she's an amazing content creator. She's so funny. She's got it, she's firing on all cylinders, I promise you. So definitely go check out Kelsey. Now we're moving into the segment that I call Open Floor. This is just a chance for me to chat about whatever topic comes to mind at the time. And this time, the topic is subscription boxes. Subscription boxes in general, just that entire concept has become very, very popular as of late. There is a subscription box for everything from food to makeup, movies, freaking chai tea, like everything. It's insane. So of course, I'm going to talk about yarn related subscription boxes. They have been popping up everywhere and I don't mind it. I'm actually subscribed to a couple different subscription boxes, things that I do personally and some that I do for promotional reasons. So I have two here that we're gonna open up together today. So the first one that I'm gonna share here is called Stash Yarn Club. So this is a brand new subscription service that has been introduced by the lovely gal behind Unraveled Mitten. And what I love about this even before opening it is that it is a crochet centric subscription box. Y'all know how I feel about being a crocheter. I do have a chip on my shoulder. I get hella defensive when I feel like we are not included in the conversation. So when I see things that are very, very specific to crocheters, like my heart just sings. It just makes me so very happy. Even this packaging is really cute. It says really, really awesome yarn. And I already know what's in here. I don't know which colorway is in here, but I know what's in here. And this is from her January box. Now this one is no longer available, but I was holding on to it because I wanted to open it together to talk about subscription boxes. So I'm gonna get this open now. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. I'm gonna take everything out of here so you can see everything that's in here. Is that everything? Okay, cool. So, first thing, we got some Hula Go. We got some Hula Go. I'm a fan. We, we know this. Let's look at this color real quick. It's got like this really gorgeous ice blue. The color is called Open Skies. This is a Superwash Merino Nylon Blend Fingering Weight. 460 yards for her 100 gram skein. That is a lot. Um, hand wash, dry flat. 
blah, 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 blah. So this is like this really pretty kind of icy blue. It almost has like purplish undertones. And then it's got all of these really like acid green speckles in it, which is beautiful. And what was fun about Stash Yarn is because this time, I think there were either two or three different colorways. So you didn't know what colorway that you were getting, um, which I think is one of the most fun things about subscription boxes. Like if you can create a mystery subscription box, that is the reason why I'm going to buy it month after month after month. If you tell me what's in it, like I could either just go get that or it might just be something I don't like, but let it be a mystery and I am totally here for it. And I absolutely love this. This is probably not a color I would pick myself, but I love it. And I'm sure there's a million things in my stash that I can find to go with this. So also in here are these gorgeous bamboo buttons by Catrinkles. I don't know how to pronounce that. But you can actually weave in these buttons yourself, which is really, really cute. There is a picture of the pattern that's included with this kit. So Stash Yarn January 2019, where do I download the pattern? She's got all the links here and then a coupon code, which you're not allowed to see, I'm sure, because you didn't buy the kit. So she's got a pattern here that you can make with the yarn. It's beautiful. It's this really cute twisted headband. And then she's got all of the colors and she talks about all the stuff that was included in the kit. So these were the three colors that were an option and I got Open Skies, which is pretty, but the other two are gorgeous as well. Um, and then it's got the full pattern um, here too. So she's got that printed out. And then she talks about the colors that are coming next month. I feel like just from opening this and quickly going through it that I'm already in love with this subscription box. Uh, for several different reasons. One, the yarn is fantastic. And I don't know if she's planning to continue to work with indie dyers or if she eventually wants to dye her own yarn. But I really like the idea of being introduced to a new dyer or having something in my stash from a dyer that I love based on a subscription box. So I really, really love that. I love the idea that there are multiple options. And when she was promoting this month's um, subscription box, she basically said, here are the three options. And I was like, ooh, I hope I get this one. Or ooh, I hope I get that one. Or oh, they're all really pretty. So I love the anticipation factor of it as well. This is really reasonably priced. Let me double check the price really quick. So you get two different options. There's the basic kit and the premium kit. The basic kit is 30 bucks. Um, you get a skein of premium hand dyed yarn, a Ravelry download for the pattern, and each month you choose from three different colorways. So that, so the basic kit is just the yarn and the pattern, which is cool. And then the premium kit, I guess, is the one where you get a special little goodie. So a surprise yarn or crochet related extra. And that's what the buttons were for. So I re received a premium kit um, for PR for this, which was really awesome. But for like 45 bucks, I'm totally, I think it's totally worth it. I think Hugh Loco's yarn is damn near $30 by itself. So all these other goodies delivered right to my door with a free pattern with the, the digital download. I love it. And it's crochet centric. I mean, clearly, if you're a knitter, you could totally do something with this yarn. Maybe not so much with the pattern, but you could also use the goodies. So definitely loving this. I will include a link um, down below for you to check out Stash Yarn Club. And then the other subscription box that I have is Knit Crate. Now, Knit Crate, I feel like is OG. Everybody knows about Knit Crate. Maybe, maybe not. I feel like I've heard of Knit Crate for a very, very long time. And I love that as a company, we've been able to watch them grow. They've moved a few times to like different distribution centers and you you really get to see behind the scenes like I feel like Knit Crate brings you along with their process at least through their social media and they're also really great about using their blog using their own website and also using all of their social media platforms and using Ravelry to get you excited about the next month's crate so I haven't opened this one yet I know that this month there were a couple different options so I'm curious to see which color I ended up with <gasps> so there was like a tealy green and a purple. I gosh, the green. Ooh, it's so pretty. So this color is called Malachite. This is Audin Woods Halo DK, 50% alpaca, 30% merino, 20% nylon. DK weight 236 yards in these skeins. That feels so nice. And it feels similar to, I wonder if it's the same. Halo DK, Halo, Halo, no, this is Wool's Halo. Oh yeah, they are the same. Okay, so this pretty stuff was some yarn that I got in a knit crate several months ago, and it's the same base, which is nice. Would I put these together? Probably not, but I love that they theoretically could go together because they're the same base. So when it comes to Knit Crate, you have two different options for the crate that you receive. There's the membership crate, which is what I get. So you usually get two skeins of yarn and then you get this really awesome like 
booklet that tells you more about the yarns. It tells you about the designer for the patterns that you get because you get one knit and one crochet pattern. Uh, and it tells you about the colorways that were chosen. I feel like I always want to like brew a pot of coffee and just sit down with this booklet and really um, get a feel for behind the scenes like what was going on at Knit Crate when they put this together because they're really transparent about them. I'm loving this crochet pattern this month. It's from Jen Hayes Creations. The pattern is called Bell Askew. So not only do you get the pattern, but you also get information about the designer. And Knit Crate really focuses on promoting um, every person that's involved with every step of their process, which I think is so cool. So I get the membership crate and I think this one's like 30 bucks a month, 25 bucks a month, including shipping. And you get the yarn and also the booklet and the booklet includes links to download the patterns. Now they also have a sock crate where you get one skein of sock weight yarn and a knitting pattern to go with that, which is really, really cool. Uh, I love Knit Crate because I feel like from month to month, they do different things to make it super fun. So not only do you get your crate, but they also have areas on their website where you can buy additional skeins of yarn if you want. Let's say there was a colorway that you didn't get in your crate that you really wanted, you can go buy that skein. They have like really fun promotions throughout the month for you to get additional yarn, get the patterns, find out about the designers. Knit Crate I think is really fantastic, especially for somebody who hasn't tried subscription boxes before. It's really reasonably priced, I think 25 bucks for all this yarn and all of those kind of pattern assets. You really can't ask for a whole lot more than that. Overall, my thought on subscription boxes is that it really depends on where you are in your maker journey and your personal preferences. There are so many different types of subscriptions that you may decide that a subscription is for you and you just have to find the right one. Or you might decide that subscriptions are not for you, that you prefer to just buy your own yarn, research your own patterns, and do things at your own pace. And that's totally fine. I don't think subscription boxes are out here to try to change anybody's mind, but it's more so to engage people in in this community of working on projects together and really sharing in that exciting vibe of like something's coming for me in the mail which who doesn't love receiving packages and opening up and sharing your excitement and having kind of that big reveal so between stash yarn club and knit crate and the many other subscription boxes i love them i think they're fantastic i think it's I think subscription boxes in general are just very in right now. So I'd love to know your thoughts on subscription boxes as well. If you're subscribed to any, um, definitely let me know down in the comments. So we're going to start winding down here. And before we do, I wanted to share with you the pattern spotlight for this episode. And that is my sweet gingham baby blanket. So this is a really fun Tunisian crochet pattern that I made in collaboration with Joanne. Um, it's completely Tunisian crochet. It uses a worsted weight yarn and I really feel like it's it's just the perfect quintessential crochet pattern for babies. It uses this really fun color palette. It uses a very easy to remember um, Tunisian crochet pattern. It's got this really fun border on it. And what's even better is that it is a free pattern on my blog, tlycblog.com. So definitely go check that out. I'll include a link below to the blog post and also a link to the paid PDF pattern. As always, you can find more TL Yarn Crafts content here on YouTube, but also on Pinterest, Instagram, and in my Facebook group, TLYC Makers. Links to all of that is below. Now it's finally time to talk about the winner of the last podcast episode's giveaway. I said that I was just gonna gather a bunch of my favorite things and send them to one person. Like I was super self-conscious, I'm not gonna lie, about my last podcast episode. I was like, nobody's gonna listen, nobody cares. After re-watching the episode and reading through the comments, it helped me to understand that we are all a community and there's so much for us to share with each other. And I'm just so grateful for every single person that watched that first episode. So I'm gonna go down in the comments right now and grab a name. Two hours later. Okay, so I just went down in the comments. I grabbed all of the comments, put them into this thingy that spits out a random name, and look who it is! Look, 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 look! <laughs> it's my friend Siobhan! Okay, so Siobhan is at Yarn Over Floyd on Instagram. She has been like such a strong, strong supporter of TL Yarn Crafts. I feel like almost from the very beginning, she's in my Facebook group. She follows me on Instagram. She's like always commenting on my lives. Siobhan is just so, so encouraging constantly. So I'm really, really grateful that you, Miss Siobhan, won this giveaway. You know how to reach me. So let me know your full name and address so I can send you your goodies. And we're going to end things off with my final word, which is a note of encouragement to take you through your day on a lighter note. And my final word is there is space for you.
I hear all the time that this creative niche is so oversaturated that everybody's making patterns, everybody's doing videos, everybody's doing everything, but nobody has the secret sauce that you do. So whatever you want to do, do it with love and good intention, and I promise you, you can make space for yourself. Thanks so much for hanging out on this episode. Hey mom, hey dad, I will see y'all next time.